kind of roles do we play as consumer? So I said the distinction between a consumer and a customer is the B2C versus B2B. But within the B2C, you can play many different roles in this buying process. So these are the various roles. You know, the child wants a toy, can be the initiator. The gatekeeper would be somebody who filters the information and tries to uh, provide it. The decider is the one who says yes or no. The buyer is the one who actually executes the order. And then the user is somebody who actually consumes it. Okay? So all these roles. Only when the item is for personal consumption <coughs> and it's an individual use product, will the same person be involved in all the roles. But most of the time, especially when we're looking at household decision making, there will be different people involved in these roles. So from a marketing point of view, if you are trying to influence that whole buying process and more than one person is involved in the buying process, then you have to address everybody who is involved in the buying process. So whether it's a child who wants the toy, if it's the child who's going to initiate it, your marketing program has to also aim at the child. If it's the father who says yes or no, you have to look at the father. If it's the sister or the servant or whoever is going to go and actually go to the store and buy it, you have to look at how that person is doing it. So again, understanding consumer behavior means understanding who's playing those roles. It's easiest if it's only one person who plays that role, right? Then you have to worry about it, one person from the initiator to the user, right? But when there are multiple people, the decision gets a little complicated. <laughs> so, one of the big issues is the type of household also makes a big difference. And this is where India is vastly different from the US. But the changes taking place in India also indicates what the future might look like. So here's where you can help me. So a product can be a household product or an individual product. Can you name a household product? Fridge. A fridge is a household product. Individual product? A shampoo. A shampoo. A shampoo. A shampoo. Shampoo is individual. Okay. Uh, that guy over in the corner there. Interesting stuff on your computer? No? You're spending too much time looking at the screen. Do you use shampoo? <laughs> Yes, of course. Does your family use shampoo? How many members in your family? Six members. So all of you said shampoo is an individual product. No? Not an individual product? What kind of a product is it? Huh? I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. <laughs> a public product? I don't think there's a category called public. A bus is public. <laughs> no, I'm only talking about your household. There are lots of people in India who don't use shampoo, I know that. Huh? Joseph Bolo, Sundane, I'm old. Here, yeah, come here, I can't hear you. Come here. Are you a first year student? <laughs> How come you're sitting in the back? <laughs> because you're late. So now see what happens. When you're late, but not so late, you get to sit in the back. But if you don't pay attention, I get to call on you. Okay, so shampoo. But in your household, 
Is it an individual product or a household product? Household product. Why is it a household product? Because she said it was an individual product. Yeah. Everybody uses it in their family. So the big distinction is for in your household. How many people in your household? Uh, four people are there. Four people are there. So and why is it? We have it? four products, shampoo products. My is a professional one. My husband used the Pantene. My father-in-law used Cleaning Plus, and my mother-in-law is not using anything. Muldani material, whatever. She is comfortable. With. So we have four products. For she four has four products. How about in your household? So they have Dove and everybody uses Dove. So that's a good example of actually a, a changing market because if you had to say what shampoo itself is a relatively new product in India. Uh, because it's a relatively new product, uh, that sachet, you know, the little packages, uh, has been considered an innovation in in, in the world market, because that's not how shampoo was marketed, right? And because it is not used that frequently, that the sachet makes sense. In the US, we buy big bottles like this. Yeah. Um, and everybody in the household has their own big bottles. So yes, it's an individual product, but it is used so heavily that those little uh, pack sizes would not work. But in India, the product is new, so that's why, you know, these try what we call trial sizes, and it's kind of funny experience. One time I landed in Calcutta Airport, and I was waiting for uh, the car service, and this guy came in with a tray and these little cups of coffee, right? So he put the coffee in front of me, I took one and I drank it. Then he said, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little surprised, you know? Because these little cups are what, how we sample. So I thought some company was promoting coffee. <laughs> and they were giving samples, you know, selling coffee. So, you know, the innovation in packaging to meet the needs of your customer is important. So what you demonstrate is a market that's growing and still a household product. But what you are indicating is the market may go that way, where what could have been a household product is now becoming an individual product. So then the decision making changes. Because in your case, whatever the product, and obviously you're a Dove loyal uh, household, uh, whether or not I like Dove, it doesn't matter. The, the household decides it's going to be dove and whether you've got dry hair or you know oily hair and that's not going to be common across all members of the household but it's a household product and I assume they don't buy the sachet no. because then it would not work right so <coughs> there is no sort of a hard and fast rule of individual versus household um, things change but a refrigerator so far is still household. Every member of the house won't have a refrigerator, right? Uh, and then if the household is nuclear, what does nuclear mean? Not just small in size, the relationship between the members of the household are different, right? So nuclear is usually two generations, mom, dad, and kids. As soon as you get, like yours, it's a small size, four people, but there are two sets of adults. That's considered to be a joint family because they are adults. And as adults, they have different resources, different power, different decision-making authority. So, you know, the, you and your husband and the parents is a different relationship than if it was you and your husband and your two kids. It's still four people. But the relationships are different. And these relationships determine how decisions are made. So again, if you look at the US versus the Indian market, US for all practical purposes is nuclear household. You know, people just don't live in joint families unless they belong to very specific ethnic groups. But even that, it's not common. India, I think, percentage-wise, and Bhavna can do it, I thought the percentage was higher, but I think some statistics I've read is only like 40%. 
are considered to be joint family. Nowadays, yes. But, but even going back of data in the 60s, the NSS and other Ministry of India statistics, what do you think? What is the proportion of households? But is it, I think it's 80 or you know it is 80? <laughs> How many of you in your family have joint family? Remember joint family means grandparents, parents, uncles, all those living under one roof. So if I put, if you put your hand up, that's not 80%. <laughs> yeah, it's about 40%. <laughs> Bhavna, what is the right percent? <laughs> Somebody's homework. I want this answer before I leave on uh, Wednesday. Okay, so the household type makes a big difference on decision making. If you buzz, what that will happen is I'll shout louder. Which means by the time afternoon comes, I won't have any voice left. <laughs> so that may be a good strategy that I don't have to lecture and you don't have to come. <laughs> so the other variable that has been found to be very important. Somebody wants water? Yes. <laughs> is, is the variable called involvement. So again, as consumers, we buy many, many, many things, right? So we have long shampoo, to shoes, to computers, to you know, banks. We're making a lot of decisions. And in theory, if you are a rational decision maker, you would go through that process of searching for information, evaluating alternatives, and making sure you're getting the best deal, right? And best in terms of your utility. So you should maximize your utility. That's what is in theory. In practice, what we find is we are, and one of the variables that we use to explain that is involvement, is based on which products we care about the most, and that's involvement. We will spend a lot of time looking at it, evaluating it, searching for it, and making a decision. And for other products, which we don't care about that much, we won't spend that much effort. So what kind of products do we care about? It will differ from one individual to another, right? So uh, you know your friends in the back, they're doing the same thing you did. Come would ask one of them. Are you two second year students? Yes, my son. Yes? Okay, what do you, what, what products are high involvement for you? <laughs> high involvement? No, no, no. no, high involvement in the sense that I am involved in. Yes, he's involved in. Okay. Up, up. Right there at the back. No, not you, that guy in the back. What products are you involved in that you will spend a lot of time thinking about, looking for information? Will it be shampoo? Hmm?